um, most children with liver disease are managed in a very standard way. They are given a, a medication called ursodeoxycholic acid, which is a bile salt itself, and it makes the um, bile more viscous, easier to, to flow from the liver. So it helps to remove the toxic bile salts from the liver, but not, it's not, of course, hugely effective. They're given um, medication for itchiness, of which there are 10 or 20 different medications um, in indicating how difficult it is to, to treat the pruritus. So they may be on cholestyramine, they may be on phenobarbitone, they may be on rifampicin, lots of different drugs. The mainstay before the discovery of, of um, odivixabat and other um, ileal bile acid transport um, inhibitors was nutrition. Because as I mentioned earlier, these children are not able to absorb fat. So they can't absorb the fat from the milk, which is the most calorific part of it. And they can't absorb the vitamins they need for everyday life. So supplementing in large quantities in the vitamins, fat soluble vitamins, and providing a modified nutrition, um, which, which brings calories in in a different way from the fat they can't absorb. Those have been the mainstay of, of treatment. If it's a mild case, and there are mild cases, they may manage quite well just on that. But if it's a severe case, that really will be insufficient to manage the pruritus or to help the child grow. And that's really when one would start thinking about surgery um, and what kind of surgery the child should have. So there are two forms of, of surgery. One is um, a biliary diversion in which there's a surgical operation in which the bile ducts are diverted from the liver um, to, the, to the skin and they drain into a bag. This is sometimes effective at reducing the bile salts and improving life for the child, but it's a very mutilating operation and it's associated with a lot of electrolyte and water disturbance and loss. And for growing children to have a bag on their abdomen in which it's got to be changed several times a day is not ideal. And of course, as teenagers, they don't tolerate that at all, as you can imagine. Um, one can convert that internally to a slightly different operation, an ileal bypass. That's very, that's very popular in Poland for some reason. Um, and um, we don't do that in the UK particularly, or at least we've rarely done it. So that works in some children, and the, um, there's been a very big natural history study, the NAPED study, in which um, children with PFIC of, of all sorts have been followed, those who've had a biliary diversion and those who did not have a biliary diversion. And it's quite clear that if, the, if you are able to reduce the body of sufficient numbers of bile salts, that the children do better. But not everybody does well. And um, I think the reasons for that are not entirely understood. It's related partly to the genotype of the disease and, and the expressed phenotype. The final surgery, of course, is liver transplantation, which um, replaces the liver. And therefore, the child has a new liver without a bile salt, salt transport defect. This is very effective for PFIC2 but it is less effective for the first one, PFIC1, because it doesn't correct the other extra liver um, problems that are associated with this disease, like gut problems and, and, and diarrhea. Now, liver transplantation, of course, is a big deal. It's a lifelong treatment. Children have to undertake uh, medication and rejection for the rest of their lives. Um, and, of course, there's a risk of death um, and, and complications. So that's not ideal either. Thank you.